In this lesson, we will discuss the first law of thermodynamics, that energy cannot be created or destroyed. We'll also see that total energy can be divided into two parts, heat transfer and whether work was done on the system or by the system. We'll also define system and surroundings, which will help us throughout the rest of this chapter. But first, a thought experiment. Consider a bucket of ice that melts into liquid water. Which bucket weighs more? Well, we know from conservation of mass that the mass cannot be created or destroyed. So both buckets must have the same mass before and after the change. We have a similar law for energy called the first law of thermodynamics. It states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. So let's return to our melting ice bucket. Which bucket contains more energy? Well, the answer is that the liquid water contains more energy than frozen ice. In general, solids contain the least energy, liquids contain more, and gases contain the most. So do these buckets violate the first law of thermodynamics? Did we somehow create energy out of nothing? Well, they don't when we include energy as a quantity in the reaction. We need to add energy to ice in order to melt it. The amount of energy we add to melt the ice is exactly equal to the difference in energy between ice water and liquid water. In chapter five, we will be thinking a lot about energy. And our focus will be to add energy to our reaction equations. Sometimes energy will be a reactant, such as in our melting ice. We would call this process endothermic. Other times, energy will be a product, such as when water vapor condenses into liquid water. We call this kind of process exothermic. I find it most helpful to think about energy transfer like I think about cash. In this analogy, stored chemical energy is like money in the bank, while heat is like cash in my pocket. In the same way that deposits and withdrawals can transfer money to and from my bank account, transfers of heat and work can convert chemical energy into kinetic energy. There are two ways energy is transferred, heat and work. Heat causes changes in temperature. In this example, the thermometer loses heat, causing its temperature to lower. Work is a little more difficult to understand. Work is caused by a change in the position. In the example of the piston on this slide, the outside atmosphere puts pressure on the piston, compressing the gas inside. This is considered work done on the system. You could imagine that a compressed gas has a higher potential energy than an expanded gas. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy is never created or destroyed. So a change in energy, delta E, must come from either a transfer of heat, Q, or from a change in position via work, W. These quantities are just as often positive as they are negative. You will need to be able to calculate any one of these given the other two in a description, which we'll practice shortly. Energy has many different units throughout the world, but in this class, we'll consistently use the joule or kilojoule. Humans have specific phrases for when each of the values is positive or negative. And I recommend you study this table to learn which phrases indicate positive and which phrases indicate negative. When heat, Q, is positive, we say that the system gains heat. When Q is negative, we say that the system loses heat. When W is positive, that means that work has been done on the system. When W is negative, we say that work is done by the system or that the system does work. Let's imagine a scenario in which a chemical explosion raises a piston.
if the total change in energy is negative 300 joules and the system does 100 joules of work, how much heat is gained or released? Try answering this one yourself. In these kinds of problems, the difficult part isn't the math. It's getting the negatives and positives right from the words in the question. Gaining heat, gaining energy, and work done on system all mean positive values. Losing heat, losing energy, and doing work all mean negative values. In this problem, the system does work, so we know that work should be negative 100 joules. Solving for Q gives us negative 200 joules. So does the system gain or release 200 joules? Well, think of potential energy like money in the bank. If a transaction on your bank statement read minus $200, then your bank account would have lost $200. Therefore, in this problem, the heat was released. Going back to our piston example, let's imagine we've sealed the piston so that it cannot move. This system can no longer do work, so all of the energy released is as heat. This process would create more heat this time when the piston is sealed than if the piston were allowed to move. But please do not test this at home. I'd like to introduce two final vocab words before we finish this lesson up. System and surroundings. The system is the part of the universe being studied. It can be sometimes difficult to determine what the system is, but it's usually enclosed so that no molecules can leave or enter. Only heat can leave or enter. The surroundings are everything which is not the system. For example, if someone is using an ice pack to cool down their ankle, we would usually say that the system is the ice pack since it is a closed container. Heat will flow from the surroundings, which are the room and the body, into the ice pack. The distinction between system and surroundings allows us to write the first law of thermodynamics in a very useful way. Because energy cannot be created or destroyed, the change in energy of the system plus the change in energy of the surroundings always equals zero. This means that the system gains energy, it must have gained that energy from the surroundings and vice versa. We'll use this little math trick in the calorimetry lab to measure the change in internal energy of a salt as it dissolves into water.